Please disregard the onesie. Some of us are experiencing an early winter. <laughs> What's up guys? It's October and 40 degrees in Texas, but you probably don't care. So on today's video, we're going to be talking about my five tips to improve your step exam score. There are three major hurdles that you have to get through while you're in medical school prior to applying for residency. That's step one, your third year clerkships with their shelf exams, and step two. So in my previous videos, I talked about how I prepared for step one with the resources and my study schedule, my study habits and the resources I use for my third year clerkships, and then the resources I use for step two. Now it's time to take it a step further. Now it's time to talk about how do you take the step exam or how do you take the exam smarter? And in this video, I will be outlining some of the strategies that I use to take step two and how that helped me improve my score. So let's get to it. So if I only had one resource that I could use in order to prepare for step one and step two, it would obviously be UWorld. And if you're a med student and you're not thinking about using UWorld to study for step one or step two, you're already light years behind your peers. So for step two, I used UWorld differently. For step one, 50% of my study time was geared towards UWorld. In the other 50% I used to study with other resources, such as First Aid, Pathoma, Sketchy, etc. Um, for step two, 90% of my study time was geared toward, towards UWorld. So let's get into the five tips I have to improve your step score. So the first tip, you must, you must do practice question sets must you just have to because the step exam is a timed practice exam so there's no reason for you to use self-paced question sets while you're on you world you must use timed question sets so for step one 99 percent of my sets were self-paced for step two 99 percent of my question sets were timed and I would say at least 95% of your question sets need to be timed. Tip number two. So I set a goal for myself that I wanted at least 15 minutes at the end of the first pass of each set to go back and review. And what I mean is after getting through the first 40 questions, I wanted at least 15 minutes at the end of that set so that I can go back and review questions that I wanted to review. And the reason why I wanted a lot of time towards the end was that I, I realized that while I was taking the exam and looking at the time that I had to take the exam, I was very anxious. And instead of actually reading the questions and thinking about only the question, I was also thinking about my anxiety about the time running down. So at times I was not really um, focused on the question to the point where at the end of reading the question I had to go back because I already forgot what the question was asking because I was so anxious. Um, but what I realized was that after I got through all of the questions and I still had time remaining, that anxiety was either completely gone or alleviated so that I could go back on questions that I wanted to review and only think about that question. My mind was so much clearer. I didn't have anxiety about the time running out because I already answered everything, so I wasn't worried about not answering everything. Yeah. Tip number three. So how do you optimize your time? So as you continue to practice how to take these time practice sets, you start to develop a strategy. So because I set a goal for myself that I wanted at least 15 minutes at the end of each question set, as I was going through these time question sets, I started to develop the strategy, not on purpose, but it just happened because I wanted to achieve that goal. Now, the strategy that I'm going to outline is my personal strategy. It may not work for the masses, but it's something that I felt really helped improve my score by 20 points. It is very imperative for you to figure out the strategy that will work for you. So the first thing I would do for each question is I would initially read the answer Answer choices and the reason why I did that is because the US Emily has a great way of asking very broad questions that can point you in so many different directions but by reading the answer choices first it kind of narrows all of those directions that the question can actually take so therefore while you're reading the actual question you're more focused on what the question is asking you because you already have an idea of what it's looking for based off of the answer choices that you previously read. So by doing this, I saw that I was while I was reading the question, I was actually able to analyze the question as I was reading it. 
So at times, as I was reading the question, if I saw something that was pathognomonic for one of the answer choices that I previously read, I would pick that answer choice really quick and move on. The scary thing about this strategy is that the US Emily at times throw curveballs to where the last two sentences of the question stem actually gives you the answer, which may not be the answer that you picked. So sometimes I would also read the last sentence or the last two sentences of the question to kind of reassure the answer that I picked. I tried not to spend more than a minute on each question. And by doing this strategy, at times I spent anywhere from like 15 to 30 seconds on each question, um, best case scenario. <laughs> This strategy is what allowed me to improve my remaining time from five to 15 minutes after the first pass of each question set. So now that you've optimized your time and you have 15 minutes at the end of the first pass to go back and review, what questions do you prioritize to review? Because in all honesty, 15 minutes isn't going to give you enough time to get through all 40 questions. In my experience, it only allowed me to get through about 10 to 20 questions. So that leads me to tip number four. You better mark those questions. So a feature on UWorld as well as step exams is that it allows you to mark questions that you want to go back and review. So instead of seeding through all of the questions one by one, by pressing review, it will show you all the questions that you marked. You click that question, boom, you can review it that quickly. So after getting through the first pass of the 40 questions, I would have about 20 to 25 questions marked. And I was honestly very generous with marking questions. Like for instance, there were some questions that I knew for a fact that this was the answer, but it was almost too easy that I felt like there has to be a catch. So I would mark that question so that if I had enough time, I would go back and look over it just to make sure that the question didn't throw a curveball that I didn't notice. So now you may be thinking, okay, I marked 20 to 25 questions. 15 minutes is still not enough time to get through those 25 questions. So how do you prioritize which questions that you go back and you review? So in addition to marking questions that I wanted to go back and look over, I also got a scratch paper and wrote down questions that I knew I had to go back over and look at. These were about seven to 12 questions. And these are the questions either I didn't read the question fully and the answer could potentially be wrong. Questions that I only narrowed down the answer choice to two questions, I mean to two answers. Questions that I completely skipped and then uh, biostat questions. So I usually have enough time to get through these questions, but there is always a scenario where you don't. So what do you do when you don't have enough time to get through those seven to 12 questions? So I took it a step further where the questions that I wrote down on scratch paper, I circled the ones that there was no way I was going to finish this question set without getting through those questions. If anything, if I only had three minutes, I need to get through those questions that I circled on the scratch paper. So this was a lot. Let me try to break it down a little bit further. So as I'm going through my first pass on my question set, my timed question set, I'll mark about 20 to 25 questions that I want to go back and look over. Of those 20 to 25 questions, 70% of them are right. So of those 20 to 25 questions, I write down about 7 to 12, 12 of those questions that I really, really want to go back and look at. Of those 7 to 12 questions, 50% of them are right. Then of those seven to 12 questions that I write down on scratch paper, I circle about, let's say three or five of them that I really have to have to go back and look at. And of those three to five, about 30 to 50% of them are right. So taking this exam is all about optimizing your time and spending your time only on those questions you know will be very fruitful. So I'm not going to spend my review time looking over questions that I know 70% of them are right. Instead, I'm gonna look at those questions where I know 50 to 70% of those questions are wrong. So after getting through those questions that are circled, if I have more time, I will get through all of the questions that I have on the scratch paper. If I get through all of those questions that I have on the scratch paper, then I will get through all of the questions that are left marked on my uh, exam set. Of course, in the beginning of doing this strategy, my scores weren't that good on UWorld, but after practicing with these time uh, question sets over and over again, I saw my uh, scores improve continuously. So yes, again, this was a lot. If I lost you anywhere, please rewind, rewatch, and then rewatch again until you get it or until you somewhat get it. Now my fifth and probably the most important tip to improve your step score 
is to have confidence. You are smart and you are capable of achieving any goal score you set for yourself. For years, I've told myself that I wasn't a good exam, a standardized exam test taker. And honestly, this was because for my MCAT, I didn't do too well. However, I did well in school. So the only logical explanation for that was I wasn't a good standardized exam test taker. Wrong. And you're wrong too if you think the exact same thing. So if you are not a good standardized exam test taker, how do you become a good standardized exam test taker? You practice. Like Kobe didn't become Kobe overnight. Kobe became Kobe because he practiced. And he set a goal, he set a standard for himself that he wanted to achieve and he achieved it and now he's Kobe. So in order for you to become Kobe, to elevate yourself from the D-League into the Kobe status, you need to practice. And not just practice, you need to practice efficiently. And how do you practice efficiently? You start taking these timed uh, question sets and you get yourself familiar with the way that you're going to be actually taking the exam the day of and develop a strategy that you know or that you feel will help you optimize your time so that you have more time towards the end to review. So now if you're not a reviewer, I suggest that you become one because yes, become a reviewer. If you're not, if it's not your cup of tea, okay, I get it, but you should. So the funny thing is that I walked into step one saying to myself that I'm not a good standardized exam test taker. So I kind of limited myself and I honestly predicted my step one score because I told myself people who are bad exam, uh, standardized exam test takers don't make in like the 80 or 90% quartile on step exams. So therefore I went into the exam um, with, with limited amount of confidence. I told myself that I would allow my knowledge to lead me towards a good score. And granted, I did well enough, but I honestly do feel like if I walked into that exam with more confidence and knowing that I would be able to do well, I probably would have done a lot better. For step two, I walked into the exam telling myself I'm getting a 260 or better. And honestly, that's what happened. So guys, speak your goals into existence. Set a goal for yourself and reach that by any means necessary. The only person that will hold you back from achieving your goals is 